take the nails <laughs> off so no one gets hurt. So you need to cut them so that you can really use your fingers to <laughs> the best of your ability. This sounds so great. <laughs> but yes, short nails for the girls. What's good, y'all? What's good? What's good? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be reacting to Does Victoria Know Her Biggest Song Lyrics, okay? Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we're about to get into the video. I had to send a video. I don't edit my pics. I work for it. I'm on my shit. This is a lyric from Ass Like That. Yeah. I usually work out in platform heels. Okay. Treadmill at least six miles. Just kidding. I really <laughs> have a trainer. That is my key to fitness. It is the only reason I commit to going because <laughs> I'll find a way out of it otherwise. So I think the investment into a trainer is really important for someone who wants to really commit to it and take it serious. I do everything from HIIT training to cardio. I've done Pilates. And then dance is a good form of fitness for me because I'm in rehearsals a lot and learning choreography. I started with dance. It was my first love, really. So I really, really respect dancers and what they do with their bodies and what they bring to visuals, what they bring to stages. And they bring music to life in such a beautiful way. They do. So I'm a huge dancer fan I think in another life I would be like straight up just a dancer <laughs> <laughs> I love love ass like that I work out to that song <laughs> I literally work out to that song and it gives me motivation to you know keep going and go harder in my workout I'm so deep in my bag like a grandma with a peppermint. This is a lyric from All My Mom. I mean, there's everything from peppermints to like Werther's and it's always at the bottom of the bag. What I remember about recording this song was it just being the first song that I liked right after giving birth, probably like six weeks after having my daughter. And I was writing a bunch of songs and I was just like, oh, I don't know if I got it anymore. Like I was just down on myself for the first like I, I might want to say like eight months of the song, song's life, it had no second verse. My dream collabs were always Beyonce or Meg Thee Stallion. So I was like, let me just get somewhere and then like shoot my shot and just see what happens. I sent it around to a few people and I don't think anyone heard anything on it. So I was just like, I'm gonna just write a second verse. And so that's where this lyric came from. When I hear on my mama, I think about like, street and cool and like kind of underground. When I think of the Grammys, I'm like musical masterpiece, like elevated musicianship. I didn't expect all my mama to be considered in the caliber of competitors that it's in. That's a hard category. So there's a video going around where I'm reacting to the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> there I couldn't be a more genuine <laughs> response because I was definitely <laughs> just surprised. And I know my mom, especially this being a song of kind of nodding to her, she's feeling herself. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's all around a really, really special record. For her to be in the video, for my daughter to be in the video, it feels like a generational token, you know, just like I, I just really hope that we get to see it on the trophy, you know? <laughs> that would be the, the best ending to it all. She better win at least one Grammy that night, okay? If she don't, I'm gonna kind of be mad. I ain't gonna hold you up, okay? Everybody know I love me some Victoria. If she don't win one freaking Grammy that night after all the nominations she has, and it has happened before, where people are nominated for so many Grammys and don't even walk out with one. It happened to Rihanna when it came to Anti. My girl was snubbed that night, okay? Because Anti is a fucking masterpiece. It happened with Anti, okay? So, Grammys, please, please. If y'all get it together, y'all better give my girl Victoria a fucking Grammy. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? When I first heard On My Mama, I heard a snippet of it. And that's when I was waiting for her second album. And this is like way before anybody knew, like not anybody, but this is way before Victoria was as big now as she is because she was still like the type of like artist that I was holding to myself, if that makes sense. Like I loved her first album, Jaguar, and um, I loved the first single that she put out, Smoke. And she didn't get a whole lot of like buzz when it comes to Smoke, even though I thought Smoke was an excellent song. I freaking love Smoke. Um... I didn't think she got enough credit for that song when it first came out. And then when Oh My Mama came out, she dropped a snippet to Oh My Mama and she was promoting that. I was like, oh my fucking God, like Victoria. Oh my God. I was like, you better put this shit out. I fell in love right away when I heard it, when I heard the snippets of it. And then when she finally put it out, I was bumping that shit like crazy. And then it started getting like traction, like 
like around the world. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. I'm not going to have her to myself, but everybody else is going to like witness her greatness. <laughs> everybody is going to witness this girl's greatness, you know? So I had to stop being stingy and I had to share, but it's whatever. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. She, I loved all my mama when I first heard it. And uh yeah, I still love it to this day, child. When you rock them short nails, that's low-key sentimental. Yep, that's a lyric from Touch Me. What it really is about is sensuality and foreplay and not making anything dangerous because, you know, these nails, the way that they're shaped, it's kind of like knifey. Mm. So you want to go from knifey to wifey and take the nails <laughs> off so no one gets hurt. So you need to cut them so that you can really use your fingers to <laughs> the best of your ability. This sounds so great. <laughs> But yes, short nails for the girls. The portion drop the top. Definitely made a lot of sense. The song was about her. Now they know they messy. <laughs> they know they messy for bringing out Kalani. No one, her and Kalani used to date back in the day. You get what I'm saying? Um, I wonder what happened to like, cause they, bitch, they a sexy ass couple. Okay, her and Kalani, that is a sexy ass couple. You hear me? I wish that would have worked. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you up. I wish that would have worked or they, you know, I already know she's like in another relationship with the father of her daughter. So I, that's a great union. You get what I'm saying? And they, they, they look good together too, child. But her and Kanani, bitch, I wish they would have worked because that, that is a sexy couple right there. Okay. Definitely made a lot of sense. The song was about her. But I, I'm happy we got to a place where we could just explore those thoughts creatively and not physically. Yeah, like I feel like it's really cool to just be honest and be able to be in a vulnerable space musically and then step off and be like, that was cool, girl. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> you're astronomically fine. This is a lyric from Coasted. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Mama Monet's. I'm your server, Victoria. What can I get y'all? I do want to do more acting. I feel like I have fun with it on the music side. I like to do skits and like just make up funny stuff. But eventually I want to take it seriously and actually take classes and study it because when I step into film, I want everybody in film to know that like I dedicated time to it and I didn't just get there because my artist career took off and I'm making a cameo. And even writing scripts and like music for scripts uh, for TV and film would be really exciting. I think that she would do good in movies. Like I would, I wouldn't mind seeing Victoria in a couple of movies, and uh, I think she would do. I think she do pretty good. I think she do pretty good. Life is but a dream that you manifested slowly. This is a lyric from Moment. Moment was actually the song that got me on to Victoria. Okay, this was the song that actually got me on to Victoria. When I heard Moment, I fell in love with the song, and I wanted to see what else she had. Um, the album was already out, and. I was like, oh my God, I love this fucking song. Who is this artist? And then I seen it was her and I looked up her stuff and I seen like, I just start going through all her songs. And I'm like, oh my God, I was like, I love her. I was like, okay, yep, yep. This is, this is my new artist that I love. This is the, this is my new favorite artist. So yeah. Yeah. Emphasis on slowly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do feel like I have that ability and it's been proven to me over and over because I keep writing things down, I keep dreaming about things and then they happen and some of the things are so random and I even forgot about. The first stop really is Grammys. It's been such a dream and I think that it's just so close to being something that I'm holding. So I'm doing visualizations with me holding Grammys like this. <laughs> Not like this, like this. <laughs> so I'm really into all of the things self-betterment so listening to motivational speakers in the mornings meditations going to the gym eating healthy drinking two gallons of water taking your magnesium at night like clean skin i chop my hair off it's just very it's giving like okay transform bitch and i'm trying to be a butterfly remember the trees and the bees the memories of when you used to be a kid on a swing this is a lyric from Hollywood featuring Earth, Wind and & Fire and Hazel. Mm -hmm. no, For her to be the, the youngest Grammy nominee of all time just feels like, in a sense, it's like, okay, well, yeah, you wanted that, right? Because you put her on the song. You want the best of results. And so it's in one way, I'm like surprised, but in another way, I'm like, no, but that's what you planned and I'm like, it worked. But it was super important for me to have her on the song with me because 
When I think of Earth, Wind & Fire, I think of my grandma. And she passed away the year that I came to LA. And I feel like she's been, whew, I feel like she's been an angel on my shoulder since. And so to have a daughter that has not met her, I feel like she might be her in a way, like reincarnated in some parts of her. Maybe she's talked to her before I gave birth and was like, go out here and do this thing and, and you know, help Victoria feel great about life. And Hazel being on that song just feels like a real full circle. So if that Grammy happens, <laughs> my makeup is done. It's a wrap. <laughs> just, just carry me out of the stretcher because I have to go home. <laughs> Thought you was about to get some foreplay with me. You won't even get a picture of these 4K titties. <laughs> I make myself laugh sometimes. <laughs> this is a lyric from a song called All Right. Like, I'm thinking 4K quality, but also maybe your boob job costs 4K. Or gold. So there's lots of ways to be viewed this. Maybe you have gold tits or like gold nipple rings or something, you know? So there's lots of ways 4K can go down. But he's not getting a picture of them. <laughs> okay, Janata is one of my favorite collaborators. He, whereas I usually love like a melancholy chord progression, like very relaxed, he's up tempos. He's like energy, energy. I'm in the club. I've said this before, but I do want to do a project with him. Just like maybe just an EP, like all just either vacation music or like up tempos, just you can play the playlist, a soul cycle mix, something. But he's just really incredible. I'm just trying to jump your bones. We don't got to jump the broom. That is a lyric from F-E-C-K. I usually love someone with a sense of humor, either that I can make laugh or that they make me laugh or vice versa, or both, actually. Someone who's into the same things as me usually will determine where I share my space. It's like, if you love fitness or if you love like good food or cooking it, or if you love like comedies, just, Things that I relate to that we can do together. And you gotta be cute. <laughs> Just a little bit cute. Smoke bombs and the 90s sitcoms. Ooh, this is a throwback. Is this from 90s babies? Okay, okay, okay. You went in the archives. <laughs> Growing up, it was Fresh Prince. I wanted to be Ashley Banks 100%. And then as an adult, it became Martin. But both of them are so great. You get to see different variations of black families and intimacy and, and romance on on film. And the other stuff I was watching was like cartoons, so they're colorless, like what was like, hey Arnold, like he was just yellow. So like, it was cool to just see it in, in like in real time and see the representation then and laugh. It's all comedy based. I love to laugh. Just make me laugh. I'm yours. Roll, where you been? Real protective with my soul, where you been? This is a weird from Monopoly. There's so many iterations of Victoria. When I look back, and even when I listen back to certain things that I was writing then, even how my voice sounds. So I feel like the whole career has been based on a, a, a constant morph. And then what you get today will not be what you get in three years. You know, it's just gonna change again, which I really like. So looking back on the career, I've been really blessed, surrounded by lots of great people, supportive people, lots of opportunities to grow me and to grow other people, to invest in other people's catalogs and just display some versatility there in the songwriting space. And I wanna to continue to do that. Trying to divide time between focusing on your own art and songwriting sometimes can be a toss up. And at the time I was, I had some opportunities to perform with Ariana in arenas. So like even the nerves of that, you're like, okay, I could do it. You know, I, I went out there, this big arena of all these lights, people who are here to see her. And I just was able to remain calm and have fun on stage. And so some challenges that I thought would be a little bit harder for me actually were good. So I think I could handle more than little Victoria would have thought. This was a really good interview. Um, they actually pulled out some great songs. I was thinking they were going to pull out Cadillac. I, w I was waiting for Cadillac, okay? I was waiting for Cadillac. But the songs that they chose was pretty good. They actually chose songs that basically from the beginning all the way up to now. And I think they did a fantastic job with, like, picking the songs. I really do. Even though I still was, you know, waiting for Cadillac. But that's okay. That's okay. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think about the video? Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below. 
Thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Fanatics with the fucking blood.